Okay, so we're continuing on example two, part B, and we're going to use the square root property to solve this. We want to get x squared, or the x squared equal to the number or constant. So here I'm going to go ahead and track 25 on both sides. I get 9x squared equals negative 25. I'm going to divide both sides by 9. I get x squared equals negative 25 over 9. And so now I look at this and I go, I have something squared equals a constant. So I'm going to go ahead and say that now I have x equal plus or minus the square root of that constant. Notice how I put that plus and minus right away. Once I go ahead and see this, I put x equals plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus. You need that plus or minus because you have those two solutions that we have up here. Okay? So I get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 25 over the square root of 9. So I get x equals plus or minus 5i over 3. And how to get 5i? Remember the square root of negative 25 is equal to the square root of 25i, which is 5i. Okay? So there are my two solutions. I'm going to do part C. In part C, I have a special case where I can use the square root property. Notice I have something, in this case, this is something squared equal to the number. I'm going to do that something squared equal to the number. This right here is basically your um, x right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write that this something is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. So I'm going to use the square root property right away. So I have something squared. Something squared. That something is, is all this. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and add 2 to both sides. I get x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 6. Notice how I put that 2 right in front of the plus or minus. There are two solutions, and, and your book might ask you this or your my math lab. You can write this way, or you can write it out as x equals 2 plus the square root of 6, and or x equals 2 minus the square root of 6. So the two solutions right there. Okay? So on your arm, we'll go ahead and Go ahead and have me pause the video, and I'm going to go ahead and pause it too, and go ahead and do these on your own, and when we get done, I'm going to go ahead and restart the video. Okay, so I put the answers um, on the on your own problems on the screen, and I went through each of these examples. Uh, these actually follow the example we just did. This one, I just went ahead and made sure the x squared equals a constant, so I did all this manipulation to do that. And once I did that, then I get x equals, and don't forget this plus or minus, and then you do the square root of this number. Notice how this number goes right into there, okay? Same thing here, I got x squared equals the number, so now it becomes x equals plus or minus the square root of that number, it goes right in there, okay? The third method um, to solving second degree equations is complete the square. We're not going to cover in this class. Um, if you do need this in the future for another class, I'll cover it there. Um, you can actually solve second degree or quadratic equations um, using the zero factor rule, the square root property, and then the quadratic form, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, complete the square is not necessary. And if you do need it later on, they'll probably teach you in your next class how to do that. Okay. So the quadratic formula is the last way to solving a second degree equation. And the quadratic formula says that if you have a quadratic equation in standard form or general form, then your solution x is going to equal negative b. So you have your general form. You notice how the general form has the coefficients here. Then x is going to equal to the negative b value plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times ac all over 2 times a. The quadratic formula will always work on any second degree or any quadratic function, um, or equation I mean, but it will, um, sometimes it's the most tedious, and so I tell students that I generally don't use the quadratic formula unless I find that I cannot use the square root property and I cannot use the zero factor property 
um, which we talked about um, on the first page there. Okay. So I generally, I, I generally say that quadratic formula is like my my um, last resort. And some dudes like you in the quadratic formula, leave the quadratic formula for everything. But on the exam, I'll make sure that I ask you to solve. Um, oh, take it, sorry. That make sure that you solve by um, the your factor rule and the uh, square root property. We're going to pause the video, make sure I can fix the screen. Okay, that looks a little bit better now, so let's go ahead and continue on. Um, so now the quadratic formula. Again, I wrote the quadratic formula up there, um, right here. And so we're going to do this. We're going to solve this by using the quadratic formula. We're going to do. We're going to identify. We make sure that we have zero on one side. We want it in general form. And notice how I have a zero. I'm going to write that zero a little better. Zero. Notice I have a zero right here, and that I have this in general form. In this case, a is going to equal two. B is going to equal negative 6, and C is going to equal 1. Okay, so the, the solution to this equation is going to be X equals negative the B value. So we're going to write the, I'm going to go ahead and write the formula here before I go ahead and get started. So we can refer back to it without looking at that screen above. Okay, so I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this negative 6 right into here. So X equals negative of a negative 6. Plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared, that's B value, minus 4 times the A value, which is 2, C value 1, all over 2 times the A value. So I have X equals 6, so the negative of a negative 6 is 6, plus or minus, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and type all this in my calculator, just what's inside here. Okay. You can use your calculator or you have a TI 30x2s and go ahead and pull it out and clear it out. I have parentheses negative 6, close parentheses, square. The square button is um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down that first column. 6 down that first column. Um, minus 4, parentheses 2, close parentheses 1, basically multiplication there. And under the radical, I get square root of 28. And then 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. Well, I know the square root of 28. I can go ahead and simplify that off to the side. Square root of 28 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 7. The biggest or the greatest perfect square factor in that 28 is 4. So I get the square root of 4, square root of 7. So I get 2 square root of 7. So I get 6 plus or minus 2 square root of 7 over 4. And I tell you that I just split it up because if I split it up, That'll be easier for me to reduce. And so to reduce this, I get divide by 2 and 2, I get 3 over 2. Divide by 2 and 2, I get 1 and 2. So this is equal to 3 over 2 plus or minus square root of 7 over 2. That 1 there is right in front of here, but I don't need to write that 1. Okay. So some people like to write that way, some people like to write it as 3 plus or minus square root of 7 over 2. Either one's fine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I want you to try the next one on your own using the quadratic formula and see if you can plug in those values. And then when you uh, replay the video, check your answers with mine. Okay, so I hope you paused the video and tried this one on your own. And I got um, my solution to be negative one half plus or minus the square root of three over two. Or I got um, negative 1 plus or minus square root 3 over 2. Either one of those answers are acceptable to me. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next example. Okay, and I can't use the quadratic formula the way it's written because I don't have um, one side equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and set the side equals 0, the right hand side equals 0. So I'm going to have minus 6x plus 1 on both sides, minus 6x plus 1 on both sides. So I get 3x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. That's now in the general form, which is what we want. We want in, in general form, we want it in order too because A, B, and C. You don't want to have the plus 1 on this side or on the, in the minus 6x on this side. Now I know A equals 3, B equals negative 6, and C equals 1. So X equals negative of a negative 6 plus or minus square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is 3 and 1, 
all over 2 times 3. So x is equal to 6 plus or minus, and I'm going to go ahead and figure out what this is. This is my calculator. So negative 6 squared minus 4 times 3 times 1. You can use the time button or you can do parentheses. I get 24 all over 6. And the square root of 24 is going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 6 which is 2 squared root 6. So it's going to equal 6 plus or minus 2 squared root 6 over 6. Now a lot of students will want to do this. Okay, but you can't do that. Because you want to make sure that 6 goes into both those um, terms of the numerators. So I have to do that. I go ahead and separate them out. So 6 over 6 plus or minus 2 squared root 6 over 6. So I get 1 plus or minus, and this reduces out to, this reduces to 1, um, 3, 1, so 6 square root, square root of 6 over 3. Okay, that, that would be a correct answer, or if you want to go ahead and um, write a different answer, this that would be what I would write down. You could have um, 3 plus or minus square root of 6 all over 3, and that would also be acceptable too. Okay? So let's go to example 7. We're going to solve this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. And again, we have this in form of already in the general form, so we don't have to worry about doing that. So x equals negative of a negative 2 plus or minus square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. Again, how do you know that a was 3, b is negative 2, and c is 4. And it's all over 2 times 3. So x equals 2 plus or minus square root of, and I'm going to go ahead and figure out this in my calculator, minus 4 times. So I get negative 44 into the radical all over 6. And the square root of negative 44 is the same thing as the square root of 44i, which is equal to the square root of 4 times 11i, square root of 4, square root of 11i, which is 2 square root of 11i. So I get x equals 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 11. I'm going to write this a little better. So x equals 2 plus or minus 2 square root 11i over 6. And this is what we have separated out because we want it in um, standard complex form. So I get 2 over 6 plus or minus 2 square root 11 over 6i, which is equal to... one-third plus or minus one square root 11, which is square root 11, over 3i. There's the answer right there. Okay. And some students will write that out as one-third plus or minus, and put the i out front here, which is fine. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and list all the methods for solving quadratic equations. I think I'm going to go ahead and get, um, be running out of time right now, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. But we've gone through all the methods for solving quadratic equations, except for completing the square. And I want to go over those one more time, and then talk about <clears throat> when do you use specific method. So let's go ahead and stop the video, and we'll go ahead and start this back up in the next part.